Hey, thanks for that uh, introduction, Francois. Can everybody hear me okay? Is this mic loud enough? Yeah? Okay, cool. So, um, so Steve and I are, are tech writers. We actually work on this uh, product called Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization. And uh, it's a KVM-based virtualization system. But what Red Hat's now starting to focus on is expanding out of just uh, sort of infrastructure as a service virtualization into a more comprehensive suite of cloud products. So as part of that effort, we're currently working on Delta Cloud, um, which this would never happen on Delta Cloud. It's really stable. <laughs> Aha, uh -huh. okay, cool. There we go. So this is the contents of our talk. I'm just going to run through to begin with an introduction to Delta Cloud and, and go over basically the, the principles and uh, goals of the project. And then Steve's going to talk about the implementation in detail and we'll go through a live demo. So I always like to introduce technology in terms of solving a problem. There's no point just having technology for technology's sake. What problem does this solve? The problem that we have, or the emerging problem that we have, is that cloud environments are heterogeneous. People have a mixture of internal and external clouds. When you talk about things like cloud bursting, you know, the idea that you have an internal cloud and then at peak load you cloud burst your load out to Amazon or somewhere, well, your cloud is not Amazon cloud. These are heterogeneous environments. Um, so you also need to be able to deploy workloads to different cloud environments. I mean, it's an interesting scenario that, that uh, was in the last talk that you might have disparate uh, dev and ops environments. So you could be using one cloud for dev, another cloud for ops. And you need to be able to deploy workloads around that. So in terms of solving that problem, we want to apply some principles. Um, it should be free as in freedom, and it should be based upon open standards. The idea here is because uh, if we as a vendor try to come into this and say, we own this problem, we, or we own the solution to this problem, and you have to do it using our piece, which is proprietary and closed, then it just leads to vendor lock-in. And one of the big concerns that people have with the cloud is that it's going to, it's going to lead to vendor lock-in. You, you, know, you won't just have something on the cloud, you'll have something on the vendor X cloud, and you'll be stuck there. So we want to design against that proactively. We want to design something where people choose our solution because it is better and it is cheaper and it has better support rather than the fact that they've been forced into it and then five or ten years later they hate us. So how do we do that? Delta Cloud is, provides one unified API for all of the basic uh, lifecycle activities of infrastructure as a service cloud. So. By providing this single common API, which is, which is published as a REST API, and there are language bindings for all different languages, people can develop against a single common API. They can develop scripts. They can develop GUIs, whatever tools you want to use for management of a cloud. And, and then each of the individual actual implementations of the cloud have a driver, which performs the, um, the translation between the Delta Cloud API and their specific implementation. So currently we have uh, adapters for uh, Amazon EC2, for Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization, for a whole series of different cloud corp, a whole series of different uh, cloud providers. So we also have our own reference GUI, which is called Aeolus Conductor. So this is a reference, I guess, consumer of the API, which turns it into a web-based GUI. So the components of that, you have the Aeolus Conductor, which is the reference GUI, Delta Cloud inside it, and then Delta Cloud speaking to all of the different cloud engines. You also have a couple of other components, the image factory and the image warehouse. So this is, you know, what, it, what, what am I spinning up on the cloud? Well, you need to be able to produce an image that you're going to spin up, and you need to be able to keep a warehouse of those images. So we'll go over those in more detail. Steve. Hey, how, go, how are you going, guys? Hopefully I've got my mic close enough. Um, so I'm going to talk about the core and the implementation, and also specifically the conductor part of the AOLS project, but I'll touch on the other components as well, just to explain what they are. Um, as Dave was saying, it's a REST API, the Delta Cloud core. It's implemented in Ruby on Rails and makes use of DSL as well. Um, so that's the core drivers. But obviously, being a published REST API, you can have bindings in any language you want. And there are um, example bindings in C, for example. 
um, and it's also self-documenting and that you can go and write bindings for Java or whatever else as well. Um, so when we say there's a driver, for each cloud provider that supports, there's a driver which runs on your server um, on ports 3001 onwards, basically. And each driver is just a Ruby class or an implementation of a Ruby class which provides the uh, code for talking to that specific provider and implementing all of the common uh, classes and functions. Um, it's got backward compatibility across API versions, which has recently been confirmed. Um, so that means if you write against one API, those functions will be preserved in future versions of the API, although we may extend it, obviously, and add new functionality uh, as new things become available. Uh, so the core concepts, and each of these is effectively a class within the API. Um, we have hardware profiles, which, as you'd expect, pretty much defines the memory and CPU allocations that the VMs can run on. Um, we have realms, and the concept of a realm differs depending on the provider. So for EC2, for example, they're, they're more obvious than others. Um, so you've got US West, US East, Asia Pacific, et cetera, depending on where your um, account's set up. Um, an image is basically your VM, so it's not necessarily running, but it's the image that you may put on any cloud you want at some time. Um, and then there's instances and instant states. So if you have an instance running on EC2 or, or on Rev, it can be started, stopped, whatever. Um, and storage and networking are kind of concepts that haven't been defined in the API at the moment, but they're working on them now. Um, so provider support, um, that's the current list that we've got. Obviously, vCloud and Eucalyptus um, are still work in progress. But um, basically, the idea is to support as many of the public clouds as we can and any private cloud implementations as well to support what David was talking about, which is the ability to move your workloads around wherever you need to. Um, as time passes. Uh, so for the compute providers, we can, we can do all the things you'd expect with an instance, create, start, stop, reboot, and destroy. And then obviously for each of the um, different objects like hardware profiles or realms, you can call without parameters to get a list or with a parameter to get details on a specific um, object. Uh, as I was saying, the storage and networking is part of the API that's now expanding, and so they started off with Amazon S3 support and support for cloud files. Um, but there's also heavy work in that area to get the other providers or the other major providers supported too. Um, and similarly, the actions you'd expect on storage to be able to create, update, delete um, both blob containers and individual attributes within the blobs. Um, so as I was saying, AIOS is a, as a project is an umbrella for a number of cloud-related projects. Um, so the one we'll be demoing today is the conductor, which, as David was saying, um, is a UI, or basically should be treated as a proof of concept, really, of how we expect all of this to work in the future. Um, some of the other components which support it are Oz, the Image Factory, Image Warehouse, and Audrey. Um, and the way they fit together is like this, effectively. So. If you think of the AOS project and the conductor as the larger box, the image factory, OZ, the image warehouse, and Audrey are all things that interface with the cloud provider in the in behind the scenes to um, make it all work. But effectively, if you only need one of those components for your particular uh, business need, then you can just take them out and they work quite fine separately as well. So the idea is that the image factory allows for the building of images. The image warehouse allows you to store them into, in an intermediate data store um, before you push them to a cloud provider. And Audrey provides for runtime configuration of instances once they're up and running in the cloud. Um, so how do you get it? The demonstration I'll be doing will be on a Fedora 13 VM, but there's RPMs for Fedora 13 and 14, as well as RHEL. Um, it's expected to be included around about release 16 of Fedora at this stage. Uh, so it's not going to make the schedule for 15, which is closing very soon, I think. Um, because it's in Ruby, it's been packaged as Ruby Gems. Um, it's, it's probably the easiest way to install on Debian or any other distribution at the moment. Um, alternatively, obviously, it's all open source, and you can get it at the locations provided in the slides. And I believe the slides will be on the wiki shortly um, for you to grab that. All right, so I'm just going to skip out now and hopefully provide a bit of live demonstration of the tool. Um, so here's one I prepared earlier. So what I've got here, I've got on, running on port 3001, I have what we call the mock driver. And basically, that's a driver that provides all of the functionality of the API or exposes all the functionality, but it doesn't actually do anything in the back end. 
It's basically, it's not connected to a provider, so it's just faking at being a provider so that you can do your testing and development without having to have an account connected or anything like that. And then on 3002, I've got my API um, on my driver running against Amazon EC2, which is the one I'll be demonstrating in a minute. Um, so on the API page, you can browse through it. Um, it's got, so it'll ask me for my credentials. Just, just to clarify for everybody, this is actually the REST API. This is not the, the Aeolus Conductor GUI. This is just using a browser to directly access the REST API. Yeah, so I'll d demonstrate the conductor separately in a minute. Um, so the mock driver just fakes it. Here's a couple of images, what they would look like, what the attributes look like. Um, again, just for your development and testing. Uh, if I go back to the API page, I believe it's also got a number of instances. And then with those, I can start the stopped instance. Um, and then it'll give me both the inputs that I provided, and that gives me the updated state of running, as well as the information uh, about that particular instance. And then obviously I can stop it again. But again, this isn't connected to a provider. This is all just demonstration for development and testing. But you could also do these calls, obviously, through your own client, if you wrote one, um, using whatever language bindings you chose. Um, and again, it just provides the realms, the structure, um, and some examples. So if I jump across to the Cloud Engine, which is basically the conductor, um, still some rebranding to do because this project was renamed very recently. Um, so I'll just log in. All right, so this is the dashboard for the conductor. Uh, at the moment, all these statistical images down the bottom are actually static, but I'm going to jump into system settings. Um, so they've got a number of panels in here, some of which are implemented, some which are not. Um, the main ones to take note of are probably managed providers and managed users. So in provider management, I've already added my EC2 account, and you can see that it's connected to the API I was just looking at on 3002. Um, and then, obviously, you can add as many providers as you want. If you have a driver running for Rackspace, whatever other cloud provider, you can connect to those as well at the same time. And I'll demonstrate how that's useful in a moment. Um, so the workflow, basically, I've already got a template here. But the first thing you'd do normally if you connected up your provider was create a new template. And then currently, it's only set up to work with Fedora. But thanks to the change to the Image Warehouse and Image Factory and Oz components, they're hoping to expand that list um, quite a bit. Basically, what happened was it used to use Box Grinder, which is very RPM driven. And it's moving away from that to make it more distro agnostic um, with the benefits that that obviously provides. Um, but at the moment, if you choose to spin a template, gives me a full package list. I can select either groups like base or X window system, or I can drill down into these menus here and select individual packages um, to be built into the template. So if I jump across, um, sorry, there. So if I select a template from this screen and then go build, what you'll notice down the bottom here is that this is the point where you choose your provider. So the idea is that you can use that template that you've created previously in your package selections, and you can deploy it to whichever provider you want without having to change the template itself. It actually doesn't do, the actual template stored on disk isn't the built image as such for a specific provider. So we try and keep the templates um, provider agnostic as well. And if I jump across to instance management, that's where you can see actual running instances or stopped instances. That's where you can launch an instance um, into the cloud, basically. So you can see the obvious implication of this for cloud bursting, that if you had a template which defined a, a node in a cluster or whatever, then and you wanted to cloud burst it out to a public cloud, you just take that template, build an instance that was going to a, a public cloud, and, and spin it up. Yeah. So what's happened there is I've added the new instance at the top here. And in the background, it'll be talking to EC2 and pushing it into the running state. And then eventually, I'd see it in my management console um, over on the right. But we'll probably just continue on if I jump back.
Ah, oh, sorry. Right. We're up there now. There we go. Yeah, so um, Steve mentioned before that with the GUI, it was being rebranded from Red Hat Cloud Engine to, to Aeolus Conductor. The story here is that, uh, as I said, Aeolus Conductor is actually the reference implementation of a GUI that consumes this API. Red Hat Cloud Engine is the product that we are aiming to produce around this. I mean, you, you may or may not know the Red Hat model of producing products is that we get actively involved in, in targeted development of open source products, and then we assemble those together into a product that we want to release and support. So we're actively directing our efforts into Delta Cloud API and Aeolus Conductor, and then ultimately we're going to build our own um, GUI, which, is, which will be the Red Hat Cloud Engine, which is the product that you can purchase, support for, et cetera. So this whole thing is actually part of an extremely simple and clear cloud strategy as depicted in this diagram requiring no explanation. But um, basically, basically the idea is that, that we have, down the bottom layer there, you have um, infrastructure as a service. So we have Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization as, as something that you would implement within your own organization to produce a cloud. Or, or people, of course, will use um, vCloud or vSphere from VMware, but then there are also all of the public clouds. So we want to provide this layer on top, the Cloud Engine and the Delta Cloud API, to enable you to seamlessly move templates and resources between all of those clouds. So there's more information on all of this stuff. At uh, The Delta Cloud project is, is uh, now in the Apache Incubator, and there's the Aeolus project. And finally, Red Hat is hiring. So if any of this stuff sounds interesting to you guys, we're hiring uh, all kinds of positions to write about this technology. We're hiring developers for the Delta Cloud um, and, and a whole bunch of other uh, roles. So if anybody is interested in, in working for us, please come and see us after the talk. Thanks. Are there any questions? Right, so, yeah, that's a, that's a really good question, actually. Um, my understanding is that we are aiming to produce sometime in this calendar year that Red Hat Cloud Engine product, which will be something that you host yourself. But we are also aiming, I think it's scheduled more towards uh, 2012, to produce a hosted version of this so that you can just consume the abstraction layer as, as a hosted service. But the initial product will be something you host yourself, yeah. Okay.